I just said hello, good evening, and my mic is muted. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Hello, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Tell Talk Short Talk Show, Season Two, Episode One. A very rusty tell, as you can tell. So tonight on the channel, we are going to be previewing Comic Con Aberdeen. We are heading to Scotland tomorrow. So yeah, really excited for this one. We've got loads to talk about tonight, and we've got to cram it into one hour because tomorrow. We're flying up there, so we've got to cram it all in as quick as we can tonight. So if I can get a thumbs up from Dino Joe, we'll bring Dino Joe in. Dino Joe is ready. Dino Joe, how are you doing, my friend? Good to see oi, you. Oi. Good okay. to see you. Good to be back. Good it's to very be back. Feels I've like a long much... time ago. I, think it is. I, don't, I can't remember the last one. I know we done a Christmas one, but the one before that, I can't remember. I generally can't remember like what no. we spoke about. Might, might have been Loki TV show or something, or sex education. It feels a long, long time ago. Yeah, it, yeah, it probably is that longer. It's probably November. Yeah, yeah. crazy. But yeah, buzzing to be back. We'll also, also join us tonight. We've got Ryan Milky. Ryan, are you ready to come on? Is he ready? Ryan's ready. Milky, good to have you back, my friend. How are you doing? I'm doing great, yeah. Wouldn't miss this for the world. Yeah. So Comic Con is here, guys. How are you both feeling ahead of oh, the first proper big con of the year? That needs started. packing. <laughs> I've been so, so, so <laughs> busy. <laughs> yeah, I've got the <laughs> so right busy. Um, yeah, I've had a struggle getting things dry this week. The weather's been really bizarre, so trying to get my clothes dry. So I've got to do a lot of ironing uh, later on this evening. And then I've got a morning's work tomorrow morning before traveling up. Uh, yeah, traveling up to the con and meeting you and meeting both of you tomorrow so yeah very very excited but very very busy no milky your thoughts uh another ch chance at a comic con in scotland so hopefully it'll be a good one what's your, what's yeah, your thoughts i'm absolutely hyped for this as you know this one's been planned for me for a long time this has been a certain since pretty much september for me yeah so yeah i'm i'm, I'm happy for it i'm buzzing my bag's pretty much packed all my clothes are folded washed dry <laughs> put in the bag got the beers open i'm just counting the hours now to eight o'clock in the morning to get picked up no wicked mate wicked so uh we'll start with you and joe so if you would want to talk us through your plans for the weekend what you're planning to get signed who you plan to meet so yeah no you can take it away mate yeah so it's the first con that i'm traveling to flight wise that we're only doing a day at the con or i'm only doing a day at the con so gonna make full use of the day um, I'm planning on meeting Karen Gillen as soon as she was announced. That's what sold the con for me. The lineup previously, there was a few guests that I wanted to meet, um, but nothing that would really like draw me to the other side of the UK. But when Karen Gillen was announced and she was so hard to obtain at LFCC Winter, it that was it. Flight was booked within the hour. So <laughs> yeah, so meeting Karen Gillen, got a photo and auto, and I'm also meeting. Bernard Hill, um, hopefully, as long as mm. there's no cancellations. He's not said he's there yet. Which it's been a bit quiet, nervous, that one. Yeah. It's yeah. Um, but yeah, hopefully meeting Bernard Hill, another Lord of the Rings guest to tick off. And it's a big one. Theoden is a big one. So that's my um, that's my plans. I might might get someone else as well, as I do have a diamond pass. So I'm tempted to get someone else on the day, but we shall see how it goes time-wise, etc. I was going to say, you've got enough gingers on your wall behind you as it is. So <laughs> you, can get, you can get another two tomorrow, technically. <laughs> that even. Uh, real key, your plans, my friend? So I'm there for the whole weekend. I've got the hotel booked Friday through Monday because I unfortunately can't get home to my small village on a Sunday evening with the public transports. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I get to spend the extra day. Uh, I've got some Buffy people to meet for my friend Damien, uh, James Mars does. Juliet Landau and Charisma Carpenter uh, yep. on Sunday. And then Saturday is basically for myself to get the con footage and all that stuff. And on here, I've got Ross Marquand, Harry Payton. Oh, Bonnie Hill and Robin Lord Taylor, finally. <laughs> yeah. Mm. It's weird. A lot of these names have been recycled. Like I just saw the Comic Con Liverpool announcement tonight. Or was Laz Alonso again? When I thought. That might have been like the end of his contract deals, but they seem to keep renewing them, keep recycling them. So, uh, what's your take on that one with Laz Alonso being announced again? Because, because I think you, you said you mentioned something, Joe, about his uh, photo shoot time slots, didn't you? Yeah, they're like five minutes long. They're like, yeah, I think his might be ten minutes, but a lot of the guests are like five to ten minutes long. Their photo shoots, which I will be very impressed if they manage to get that done. Um, but yeah. Um, 
doesn't seem to have sold out. It's interesting. He done, he did for Love of Sci-Fi, and he looked a really good crack. In all fairness, and obviously he's doing this one. He's doing Liverpool next, which is only a couple of months, and then he's doing Wales after that. And I think he's doing Northern Ireland after that. So they've signed up. <laughs> yeah, it's five cons they've managed to sign up to, which is it's brilliant for people that can only go to their local. Um, so that's really good in that respect. But um, yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to get up um, the map. So if we can get this up. Does it come up for you? It's... There we go. So we've got the map up. So apologies if you can't see it as well. I'll try and zoom in a bit if I can. Let's have a look. Has that done anything? I don't know. Not really. Oh, it's getting worse now. There we go. So what's your, Joe, what's your take on the, the map from what you've seen so far? Um, it's a strange one. Um, when it first came out, I was quite apprehensive just because it's all in one room. What's up, Blaze, mate? Nice to see you. Yeah, people. Um, Thanks for tuning in, guys. Yeah, so it's a strange one because it's all in one room. Um, and it just my mind immediately went to the last con in Scotland. However, seeing pictures of the room, um, as it's a stage venue, and there is seating around the outside, um, it'd be interesting to just see what it's like. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't really want to have any preempting before before we go. I'll judge it as we're as we're there. Really, I think it's weird with like it's got like the trader tables and then it's got like retailers as well. Like how yeah. Magpie toys have been uh, spec like what's the word pick chosen to be Specific. like a, yeah. promoted. Like you know their brand's been promoted where everyone else has got like trader tables. Yeah, I've seen geek retreat, Greek geek geek retreat retreats in. Is there one in Newport? I feel like I we went past one. I feel like we've seen them know. before. Yeah, I think I've seen a few of them before. I think maybe in Edinburgh as well. I think I feel like they pop up quite a lot. Um, other stores that I don't really recognize, Pixel Bash and yeah, game gameplay events, movie art. So loads of things I don't recognize, but excited to check it out. Uh, so mm. we've got. Harry's in the chat as well, so I'm not sure. Maybe my YouTube is playing up, but thank you to everyone that is starting to tune in. Kenneth's here. Hi, Kenneth. Anthony's here. Poppins here. Hey, Corey's here. Thank you all for tuning in, guys. Uh, yeah, feel free to fire away any questions about the con. Um, we're going to move on from con, con chat uh, pretty soon, actually. So um, anything else you guys want to cover about um, the con before we do move on? I think the arena looks small, mm -hmm. but that might be my editing brain talking because. I have been editing an American con and that's multi floors. So, yeah. you know, maybe I'm just thinking of differences, but I don't know. It looks very professional from the photographs that we've seen. Whereas mm -hmm. when I compare it to Edinburgh, it feels like I'm in a cow shed. It looks like they're doing the same venue because like, that, uh, that Andy bloke was there tonight, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah, at the Royal Island. Island Garden, yeah. So, yeah, so it looks like it's going to be the same venue this year. So. <laughs> Yeah. But you know, if the guests are if the guests are good, it's sometimes you could you don't really have a choice, you have to go. Like when yeah. Andy Sergis got announced, I kinda had to go. Had and, to. You know what I mean? And I, I, I like the potential seat in plan for this place. Yeah. Yeah. The one thing that I'm I'm quite apprehensive of seeing that is that the guests are the top left up here and the Q and A is next to it. Yeah. So if you're trying to have a guest, if they put Karen Gillen up the top left, for example who's going to be, I assume, the busiest guest, and you want like the best interaction for your money and for the effort you've put in traveling there, et cetera, and there's a QA and a going on and you can't hear a word that's going on, that's that's something I'm a little bit nervous about, to be honest. I don't know why the Q&A wouldn't be on the other side of the hall so yeah. that there's a, a noise separation there, but I don't know. We'll, we'll yeah. see. Um, I was just looking. See where it says photo booth B and A at the bottom? Then you've got that little black logo on the left. I thought that might have been like Karen Gillan separated. Yeah. We don't know. Even that would be weird right by the photos. But when Karen Gillan's going to have her panel, that's going to be mad. So it's going to be a bit unfair on like, you know, the the least popular people there because they might be put right near that Q&A panel and have no hope, one there. Sorry. Um, I yeah. just hope that that seating that we've seen in other pictures where they've got the seating of the venue, I just yeah. hope that's behind the panel as well. So the, that'd be brilliant. That would be yeah. brilliant. So yeah. then you can fill it up behind, and you've got a decent seat looking down rather than just a a primary school chair in front of the 
Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. It'd be like a school assembly, like but a proper one. Or like, more like a university, wouldn't it? It'd be like yeah. a university end. Yeah, that'd be really good. Corey's asking who you guys meet and he must have missed it. So uh we'll go again quickly. Joe, who are you who are you planning to meet? Uh Karen and Bernard Hill currently. Maybe more. Don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Milky, uh, who are you planning to meet on Saturday, Milky? Robin Lord Taylor, Bonnie Wright, and Corey Payton and Russ Mockon. Oh, nice! Yeah, I've got Kari, nice guy as well. So I'm still tempted by Black Panther pop because I don't know if you, have any of you seen the, the trailer for the game. Yeah, it looks pretty sick, actually. I was, I was like, "Fuck, this is good." I was yeah. actually pretty shocked. Ah, really, really, really impressive. Three, three of my Saturday ones are photos, and one of them's an autograph. All right, sweet. Well, I'm, I can't wait, mate. Uh, Mark's in the chat. Good to see you, Mark. Mark is one of the very fortunate people who has met Karen Gillan. Um, I think he chased it. chased around the room all day, didn't he? <laughs> Did he chase no, she chased. He chased us every time we right. were sat still. Um, every guest was walking past us, but um, yeah, Mark did really well um, to meet her, and that it was a testament to to her character actually. And she didn't have to meet people that weren't diamond, and that was like a minute between doing her talk and mm -hmm. um, running back and literally signing a few autos just in in the small minute section she got. So, yeah. She's uh yeah, she's great. Yeah. The question is, Joe, who's taller, Karen or Mark? Oh, I don't know, actually. <laughs> me and Mark are similar, a similar height. Maybe Mark's a little bit taller than me. So we'll see, uh, we'll see Saturday how tall she is compared to me. Yeah, I think Karen's taller than me, so I'm a bit <laughs> I'm a bit anxious. I'll have, have to get me tiptoes. <laughs> Corey says yeah, I wanted uh, the smallest guy at the com. <laughs> uh, Corey says, great guest, looking forward to the vlogs now. <laughs> Oh, Mark's and Mark says she wanted our attention. I, I I have awesome luck with these guests. I don't wear heels. Yeah, Mark don't wear heels. Um, so along with the con, we're also doing the after party. So, um, we'll start, Milky. What can you tell us about the after party and why? Why are we? Why are we going? Why are we actually going? I don't know why we're going. We're going to have something. It's different. It's fun. We haven't done it before. Uh, it's going to be great. It's my first time in Aberdeen. So oh, I've it? never been to the place, but yes, but I've, I'm looking online. It looks like it's a gothic kind of castle church style pub. Yeah. And we've got the top floor exclusive for the Comic-Con, I believe. And everyone is going to be in costume and it's going to be pretty, pretty badass. There's some like highlighted drinks on offer. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we'll have to take a see how it goes. Joe, what's your thoughts on the Comic-Con after party? I've, I've, I'm quite concerned, but I've, I've yeah, it's a weird one is. The, the tickets are cheap enough and it guarantees you somewhere to get in or you know you've got plans for afterwards, which is good. Um, yeah. And it'd be good to go to somewhere after a con with like-minded people and people that have also been at a con, so it's a good chance to network of other people and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's As Milky said, it's the first time any of us have been to an after party. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, see what it's like, and we make the most of any situation. So, as I, think as I, guess, I went um, to a party was with you guys in Aberdeen, Edinburgh. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't go out. I, I think the good thing is technically the con doesn't actually end because because it's an after party. It's still yeah. technically monopoly events, Comic Con, Aberdeen. So it will actually keep going. The night, the Comic Con day goes on for the whole night, day and night. Uh, Poppy says gothic. You say Poppy likes a bit of gothic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right then, so we've got a lot of news to cover. Let me just get the slide up. All right. Do, 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 do. All right, so how it's going to work, guys? We, we've got a, a three. You got three minutes to talk about everything, every subject that comes up. So when you hear the buzzer, it's going to move on to the next subject, and that is okay. it. So once the siren goes, we can't talk about it anymore. We've got to go straight on to the next subject. So we're not going to be dwelling on anything. Cool. So let's press play, and we are going to be chatting about Aaron Taylor Johnson. Seemingly got confirmed to be the next James Bond, but now Variety is saying that the reports aren't true. So, what are your guys' takes on, first, Aaron Taylor Johnson being reported to get the Bond role? Is there anyone else you wish got it? I know there's Idris Elba and Henry Cavill. What's your guys' thoughts? I think it's a nice, fresh take on it, to be honest with you. He's, he's what I wanted from everybody that was in the run-in, and if Ultraviolet isn't the uh, theme tune for his first Bond, are we fuming? <laughs> What's Ultraviolet? It's the missing? song. It's the song from the band from Angus Thongs. <laughs> oh, is that what he's in? He's oh, I I think I know who you mean now. Is he in it? Wait, he's in it. Yeah, he's um, 
the he's main guy. Robbie. Yeah, he's Robbie, yeah. Uh, we'll never get the one that. with the, the one with the, like yeah that's what I'm thinking. yeah everyone had that in 2000 the scout for girls era wasn't it it's the scout yeah, for yeah. <laughs> yeah so but, i wasn't for it yeah milky what's your take i have no idea who this guy is no so, no no clue whatsoever i hope yeah, we're getting a new pass? bond because i love the bond movies it was definitely time for daniel Gray to step down mm. you don't want ryan reynolds <laughs> to be bond as poppy might say so, no no <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, right. Uh, Aaron Tay Johnson, he's uh, well, his big role for me was Bullet Train. He was in Bullet Train with Brad Pitt, and that was it was Tangerine and Orange, I think it was like they were like double acts. But yeah. um, he's playing Craven the Hunter in the new Sony Marvel film that's come out. Oh, I saw your reaction to that trailer, yeah. So, see, he has got a big role coming up this year, technically. But uh, he's quite uh, from what I've seen, he's quite confident that Craven's going to be a success. So it's quite interesting. Okay. Like, I think he done an interview yesterday, so it's going to be quite interesting. It so he's young enough to maybe go on for a while. Maybe a yeah, he's, also, he's, a, he's actually had quite a lot of roles in big franchises. He's, he's obviously he's Kick Ass, which is a massive one. Oh, and, he's, um, wait, he's and, he's, and he's Quicksilver in no, the MCU. Quicksilver, that's who he is. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking okay. Silver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, he's been yeah, technically he's been in Marvel as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. He's actually in the MCU as well, isn't it? That is, yeah, that is weird. Now. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say, I was, I was thinking he's, I'm sure he's surely done other projects. So, uh, Milky, was you rooting for Idris Elba at all? No, no, he was your top pick, or was you not bothered? I'd say Tom Hiddleston, Loki, same kind of vibe with the hair, <laughs> you know, same kind of vibe. Yeah. I'd say Tom Hiddleston would be a great bond. Yeah, I think I think the ship sailed for Tom Hiddleston in the sense that, like, I don't know how old he is, but I imagine he's in his forties. Where, yeah, previous, if it was six years ago and Craig stepped down and there wasn't like COVID and stuff like that, and I think, yeah, Hiddleston would have certainly been in the running. Same with Henry Cavill. Yeah. Henry Cavill would be a would be a brilliant Bond in my opinion. But I think he's quite similar to done, his done, it's done. <laughs> Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire. Um, so let's talk about Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire. I think it comes out here in the UK tomorrow. Um, who, anyone excited for it, or is anyone going to actually be watching it? Uh, Milky, we'll start with you. Then, what's your take on the Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire, and Afterlife, the the one before that? Yeah, I absolutely loved it. Um, anything that was better than the one with all the women. No offense, but I just hated that movie. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, these they definitely revamped it with these, and actually. This will be part of my travel day vlog because I'm going to go see this tomorrow before I see you guys. Okay, I want, I want to hear good things. I want to hear good things. Yeah, I'm going to fill um, the time. So I get there at 2 a.m. and I meet you guys around 6 or 7, so I've got a good time window to go and watch the movie. 2 a.m.? I get 2 p.m., sorry. <laughs> That's a long day, Milky. That's a long day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Joe, what's your thoughts on Frozen Empire? Or, and the Ghostbusters in general. Are you a Ghostbusters fan? Yeah, I loved I loved Ghostbusters when I was younger. Um, yeah, the first remake was not good, so I was apprehensive with Afterlife. So I didn't see it in cinemas, I don't think. And then no, I watched it on um, I watched it on Sky when it dropped on Sky. And I couldn't believe how good it was. I really enjoyed it. It was like nostalgic, but not like heavy on cameos. And I really really enjoyed. It. I think Paul Rudd's great in it, mm -hmm. really good. And I like um, I like the younger cast. Um, and this one looks so different to Afterlife. Like the, it's not like a continuation in that little town. It's back in New York. It's Very really good. high stakes, and it looks it looks sick. But yeah, really looking forward to it. Yeah, I, I think from what I've heard, that's is it McKenna Grace? Is, it, is that her name McKenna? Yeah, yeah. I think she's meant to be like really, really good in it. So excited to see how she's. I can't, I can't really remember how important she was in the first one. It uh, felt she... like. Is the like granddaughter Wolf. of one of the original Ghostbusters? Like it felt, it felt like uh, Finn Wolfhard was the distraction because he was the kid from Stranger Things. So like, yeah. it was like he he was the, the main focus on the kid, wasn't it? So yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully she's really good. Uh, the comments are saying Corey saying watching it Sunday. Really, really looking forward to it. Uh, Harry says I'll be watching it quite politely, but going to watch Dune Part Two soon. Yeah, I'll definitely try and watch Dune again. Um, yeah, I'd love to go see them and see that again if I do get the opportunity. Yeah. Um, but yeah, are you two are you two Ghostbusters fans in general, or is it just something like okay watch? Because it's probably not in my top. I don't think it's in my top ten sagas. No, it wouldn't be in my top ten um, currently. It might change after this one. 
Um, but I think Afterlife's my favourite one of the of the bunch currently. So yeah, looking forward to this one. It's it's almost like a separate thing because the first two are so far so far behind. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. For me, it sits on the shelf with Jurassic Park, Gremlins. <laughs> no, walk your dead once we live. I love doing this because you get into it. Then you know. So um, on the channel, we've been do talking, reacting, doing watch parties, the walking dead once you live. Milky's been doing a breakdown with Headless on his channel. Um, so we'll start with you, know, Milky. What's your thoughts on the ones who live so far? And I mean, if people watch our channel, we, we can talk about we're up to where we are now and talk about episode five a little bit. So what's your thoughts on it? I'm absolutely loving it. It's probably the best TV right now to watch. Mm. I'm hyped for it every week. Yeah, I love oh, it yeah. that it's on the Sundays. Fills my Game of Thrones void for me. And the the uh, the thoughts of who's in the next episode and things because I've seen hooded figures and all sorts of stuff. So I'm like, who could that be? And yeah, I've had a couple of names go across my head. So I'm I'm hyped for it. I don't usually get this pumped up for a Walking Dead show, but it's good. Yeah, Joe. It's the most hyped I've been for Walking Dead for probably about ten years. It's crazy. It's so so good. Episode episode one, I was really shocked by of how good it was, and two, mm -hmm. and then it like I thought it was just going to dip off, and I was really worried it was going to be really fillery between like three to five, really, and like have bits of parts of good, and then like wait and leave a massive cliffhanger. But episode four. <laughs> is ridiculous it's, it's my i genuinely think i've been thinking about it all week just little bits of the episode keep flashing back in my mind and i keep overthinking it i think episode four is maybe my favorite walking dead episode ever genuinely so it's good big state. it's a big I state right? called, literally called it when we watched it it was my favorite ever so episode emotional ever. yeah no Brilliant. i did absolutely love the episode i see one one thing that's getting a lot of attention was the the little spinning cleaner thing what's that called again the rumba, the rumba. Roomba, yeah, that Rick, Rick was shook of that. He thought it was, he thought it was Negan or Jadis or something. But, um, <laughs> good, good symbolic now, meaning to it, how it was going around cleaning up, similar to what Rick's been doing all his, all the way through the franchise, going to a new place and cleaning up. And even when stuff gets rough, it's still trying to clean up. It yeah. was a very good symbolic thing of Rick. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. I think one thing that has made it good is something like you've mentioned already, Milky, was um, obviously Denai wrote the episode as well, episode four. But no, it's really impressive. I think I think Andrew Lincoln and Denai had a big say on the season in general, which kind they of puts the show. Yeah, they co-wrote the season. I didn't notice that until this episode. It said written by, and then it adds whoever mm -hmm. the main showrunner is, and then them two. Yeah, I couldn't believe. I'm it. expecting next week to be written by Andrew. Mm. Imagine just it just <laughs> yeah. shows the care, doesn't it? It shows the care they've got for the characters and their arcs, and they want it done properly, and they're not just gonna leave it in the hands of someone else which is brilliant yeah that they've, they've come back to <laughs> done done <laughs> <laughs> sorry Corey, i can't read your comment out we're on to peaky blinders now so uh i don't know if you saw this today but it's been confirmed that uh Kitty and murphy's returning uh to play thomas shelby in peaky blinders the movie so we've got a peaky blinders movie coming out but i don't know i feel like i think I think Peaky Blinders has got maybe worse every season, especially the last two have been pretty bad for me. But what's your thoughts? I've, I know I love Peaky Blinders. Like I love the whole feel of it. I I love the Birmingham accent in it as well. You know, I love everything about it. But especially since Polly died as well, it went it went even further down. What's everyone's thoughts? Yeah, season season six was was damaged because of because of that. Unfortunately, there's nothing they can do about it. They had to write it into something, but. I think like changing his whole personality for the final season was just a, a really bold move to take, like the no drinking aspect and quite a melancholy attitude. And I know what they were trying to do and make it more emotional and trying to connect with him more on a personal level, but it didn't work for me for season six. But it'd be interesting where it goes. I like Mosley as an as a villain. Um I assume the the film's gonna be set sort of like the end of during World War Two, because that's sort of the time period we're coming into with Hitler's been mentioned quite a lot, hasn't he, subtly um, in season six. So I imagine that's what it's going to be in and around. So, yeah, I'm I'm not, neither here nor there on it at the minute. But, yeah, I love it as a as a whole, but it's not been left in a good place, I don't think. Yeah, I, I can't remember. Is he 
is he prime minister? Is he mayor? I can't it's remember. An MP. What, MP, yeah, I can't remember what, what he was, but uh, Milky, what's your thoughts on it? Yeah, I came late to the franchise, so I watched it when I think season six had just finished and I binged it. And I absolutely loved the accents. I, I like copying, you know, sitting watching the TV and I'll say things in the same accent because mm. no one here to talk to, but that's my, <laughs> my life. <laughs> but uh, no, just I think it was great. It, it's a, one of those shows, though, it gets good, it gets good, and then it definitely dips off the last two seasons. I think I nostalgically got over the voice and I was more into the show. And you can kind of see the final season specifically. It's very stylistically shot, different mm-hmm. compared to everything else. It's like maybe it was. they yeah. lost a lot of the team or something. Because, mm. yeah, it was very different. I didn't like the last season. Yeah, the season for Tokyo was definitely different. I think I really enjoyed it when in, um, Sam Neill was in it as well. Um, you know, yeah. the guy from Jurassic Park. Yeah, I thought he was great in it. And, uh, it kind of got a bit repetitive with, with Tom Hardy, like Alfie Solomon's died, didn't he? And then he come back. Mm-hmm. And, and now, even right now, I'm not sure who's dead and who's alive. Is he alive? He's alive, yeah. Yeah. Arthur Shelby, like Arthur, Arthur Arthur's alive? Arthur's alive, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I can't. I think. Sorry about it again, mate. Sorry. <laughs> I keep meaning to come to your comment, Corey. I'm sorry. All right, let's chat about Acolyte. Who, who wants to start with Acolyte then? Uh, Acolyte seems completely out of my realm. I have no idea what I'm watching when I look at this trailer. Looks what? absolutely badass, though. Mm-hmm. And I just don't know where it's going. I know that it's supposedly set 100 years before the prequels. So, yeah, it's going to be fun. I like something different to maybe get my teeth into. I don't know if I want to deep dive into stuff and try and learn about it. I might just ignore everything that comes out between now and drop day and then just enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Have you seen the trailer? Yeah. And what was your take on it? It looks good. I like the lightsabers, especially the lightsabers. They definitely look very different, although still pay homage to obviously what we all know. Mm-hmm. But no, I'm, I'm definitely interested in it. And I like that I don't know any of the characters. It's not like, oh, there's Maul or, oh, there's Anakin or something. It's different. Mm. I think this is, I think from the trailer, I think there's a scene where it's like the most Jedi's we've seen, apart from Attack of the Clones, maybe. But there's a scene where it's like six Jedi's all together running mm-hmm. in the forest. Stuff like that looks mad, especially for a TV show. You know, Joe, what's your take? Have you seen the trailer? Yeah, I've seen it. Um, it looks really well done. Um, I just really hope that the story's been collaborated properly with everyone involved at Disney and sort of like Dave Filoni probably had a hand in it, I hope, because when I saw the red lightsaber get ignited, that did worry me a little bit because if they make if they make whoever that is, a dark side user, a Sith, it kind of rewrites the prequels because in episode one they say there's not been a there's not been Sith for a millennia. Meaning yeah. thousand years. So if they all of a sudden have a, a Sith during Yoda's lifetime, only a hundred years before it makes a mockery in that sense. That's the only thing I'm worried about, but the actual cinematography and location wise, I know, I know where it's been shot um, location in a few places. And I'm really looking forward to the visuals because it's proper Star Wars esque. So yeah. What about you? What have, um, what's your take on it? You've seen it. Yeah. What, yeah. Why did you watch Star Wars theories video today? No. Yeah. But that's what he said about, yeah. The only way Acolyte can actually work is if, um, Every person that knows about the Sith in this, they all have to die. For everyone for it to for this to be canon. Otherwise, it doesn't work. And then the whole Star Wars isn't canon. So the Disney are playing a massive risk again. And I think one thing we want as fans is it to be canon and for it to be believable. And yeah, literally all these Jedi in it have to die. Like there's like no excuses, no exceptions. Like Proper Rogue One style. Yeah, like that's the only way it can work. So I'm not sure how. I don't see. I don't see everyone, all these Jedi's dying because that's not really a Disney kind of thing, is it? To do they bring these characters in? Then they go, <laughs> Done. There we go. Royal House of Dragon now. Finally, it was coming. It was coming. Real key. You've seen. Go on. Take it away. I'll let you. I'll let I, you. T- I can't. I can't. I. I literally haven't watched it because I'm recording my reaction after this live stream. He's not watched. There's two trailers oh, out. One for green. One for red. Or black. Oh, really green, cool. There's two trailers. Yeah, there's two trailers, there's shots, there's all sorts of stuff. I know I did my season prediction thing when they dropped the thing earlier in the year. So I'm interested to know if there's anything in there teased from what I might have said a couple of months ago. Because then so. I'll be like, yes, I got it right. 
<laughs> yeah. But I literally them? haven't watched them. I've, I've held off all day. All right, chat. I'm gonna need you. I'm gonna need you guys in the chat to let me know your thoughts on the, the House of Dragon trailer. So yeah, there's two trailers: trailer for Team Black and there's trailer for Team Green. But it's mad. They both trailers got very different tones, and I don't, I don't really recall it uh, like another film or TV show doing this. So when I saw, I saw the the Team Black one first, and I was quite shocked by it. And then the Team Green one had completely different style to it, but. Yeah, obviously, you guys know what team I would be, but yeah, I think I don't quite... know what team you're going to be. I do. I've got to be Team Green. Come on, come on. You because know, because of one woman. You... Okay, wow. It's a simp, isn't it? Bro, I can <laughs> send you feet pics and you'll survive. <laughs> All right, I'd rather be a simp over <laughs> incest. Okay, that's why. <laughs> Is it Team Incest or Team Simp? You know, so I've got to go. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going Team Simp, but um, there's, there's dragons. <laughs> <laughs> there's dragons in both traders though so the, yeah the dragons are really cool so i don't know what uh, who the dragons are so maybe milky even know who they are but shocking no. shocking what the, the, the dragon oh, i don't Maybe know the dragons is it cyrax it might be cyrax there's, cyrax, there's caraxes there's they're the most two in the trailers yeah i couldn't tell you right trailer yeah i need to watch your breakdown my, my friday reaction video is going to be these two videos yeah i can't wait mate i was tempted to do it but i was like I'm I'm not the guy for it. I'm not the guy. Let's see the chat. Let's get some comments in quickly. House of Dragons season two will be the best TV show this year. I'm 100 percent sure Emmys are going to have a field day. I think it releases in a mad month, isn't it? With the boys as well and June 16th it drops. Acolyte as well, which is June. So it's going to be a mad June 4th Acolyte. Yes, yeah, it's going to be a oh, mad month. We've got stuff on Fridays, Saturdays, and oh, June's going to be breakdowns, beautiful. breakdowns. Right. <laughs> and and apparently Rings of Power is coming out in June or July as well, so it's gonna be mad. <laughs> yeah, it's not the days of the week. No. Uh Mark says they're very short trailers. Team Black all the way. Team Black since <laughs> Joe is still in love with Olivia. The boys is a couple of days before. There you go. So the way around, mate. <laughs> you know the rules. You can expect me to do very detailed breakdowns oh, on them. That was it. That was the end of the video. <laughs> that was the end of the video. So that was the 18 minutes of discussing the pop culture so what's everyone's thoughts then what out of every, all the slides there we've got the bond house of dragon acolyte um what else is there ghostbusters what's everyone one uh, walking dead what's everyone excited for the most then house of the dragon over ones who live finale every yeah uh, house of the dragon is my show yeah. i'm waiting for it i even got john snow on my chest nice is that pop and tea set or is it just a tea yeah no, it was just a tea. Like I guess I don't. I don't think I've seen a proper tea set. Joe, what are you most? What are you most excited for? Um, I'm looking forward to see how the ones who live ends. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have said that previously, but just because of how good this series has been, I'm I'm looking forward to how it ends. Um, House of Dragon. Um, the way that they're releasing this sort of like press run beforehand and they're promoting it is getting me really excited. Just because the way they're promoting it, like even that poster there. It's mad. It's, it's something that you don't really see. So yeah, really cool. Um, and Acolyte, I'm I'm pretty impartial on it actually. I'm not really like I'm not excited. I'll just watch it when it comes out, and then I might feel different. I might feel like how I did with um, the ones who live. But yeah, kind of impartial. House of Dragons is one I'm most excited for though. It looks so good. <laughs> uh, I'm just trying to get get it up on screen so we can all talk a little bit about everything now, guys. So <laughs> that was just a little a little bit of fun. Let's share the Instagram page and we can see. So who's is who's the main guy here, Milky? A Aegon. Aegon. So you got Aegon, but yeah, there's a uh, yeah. I can't I can't really speak too much. I'm awful with names as well, but yeah, he's a lot more confident now. Compared to season one, judging by the trailer, but like he was he, he did I don't think he didn't want to be king, did he? No, he never wanted it, did he? He was happy to just be sleeping with the, the girls in the brothels and all yeah. that stuff, just meant being being a lad. Mm. Um, but now yeah, firing yeah. it out the window with his mum watching. Yeah, but now from what I've seen, yeah, he he's even that photo. I think he's up for it now. You know, I think he's I think he's ready for it. But just well, spoiled, you know, isn't he? he's spoiled. Yeah, yeah, just, it's going to be a very, very interesting show and see how people attach to characters and where people go with it. Just listening to you now, thinking that just in that photograph, you feel you're confident and stuff. It's very interesting. The trailers as well, though. Yeah, the trailers you felt 
like he he has, he has quite a few lines in his trailer, maybe more than anyone else. Like him and um, Rhaenyra, I think they have the most lines in the trailers. Uh, no, I mean, I'm really excited to watch your trailer reactions as well. That'd be really, really no, cool. yeah, they will be spoiler no free. Auto, I'll make sure that they are spoiler free. There's no auto high tower in any of the uh, any of the releases <laughs> or promotion yet. That's all I'm saying. Is there? there is, there is. Have you seen the trailers? No, but as in like any of the stills they've put up or posters, he's not in it. So, I think, yeah, I think he's in he's team green, yeah, he's in team green trailer. I'm pretty sure he is, but. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know his fate. Uh, Mark says it's Telford Comic Con the same weekend as the Boys in House of Dragon. That what um, Telford is that one? Is that the Monopoly events or the Wales one? I'm not too. Birmingham, right? Monopoly. The Telford Comic One. That's Birmingham, right? It's technically Wales, isn't it? It's the it's the same. Um, yeah, it's the Midlands one. Comic Con Midlands. That's the mountain. That's the one on the mountain. Yeah, fifteenth yeah. and sixteenth. Yeah, yeah. I'm there that Saturday, and then coming home to do House of the Dragon. <laughs> Yeah, you can talk to him. You watch House of the Dragon tonight, mate? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm going to fly my dragon back. <laughs> uh, Harry says, uh, the ones who live finale can either be good or bad. Rick needs to make it back to the Commonwealth. And then I think a massive war will unfold between them and CRM. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think of the Commonwealth. Like, who runs it now? I can't even think who runs it. So, did they take it over? I can't even remember. And I think Lance Lance died. I think that's what I can remember. You got Mercer you want, still. Do you want the ones who live to end? With these six episodes, or do you want a season two? I, I think it's going to end. I don't think there'll be a season two. There has to be, right? We've got Daryl season two, and we've got Negan and Maggie season two. Why would they not do the best show they've ever made as a season two? Well, I think if they do a season two, it means they don't they don't get back to the Alexandria or the Commonwealth. Yeah, and imagine the, the final end. ending is Jadis coming down on the um, Alexandria in a helicopter. That's yeah, the final shot. Because if they get back to Alexandria and then it's back, to the show's The Walking Dead again. Because you got all the other characters there. You know what I mean? Like, and yeah, so I, don't, I get you. So it's almost like they they're going, they're literally heading in the direction back to The Walking Dead. So and obviously a lot of these people probably won't want to be in the show. I can't see it being a season two, but I do get I do get what you're saying about a Walking Dead universe crossovers. Um, but I, yeah, it's a big. I, I, we don't know their plans. So. Do you think Rick um, Andrew Lincoln wants to play Rick Grimes for what another five years? He's not doing anything else, from what I've seen. I think he's probably going to have another six episodes in him. Maybe a season two six episode run where Jadis has got the kids and they've got something to fight for to get back, and then it all mm. ends. Yeah, like yeah, for me, like for me, my end goal was is to see Rick and uh, Judith meet, and and then Rick and Daryl as well. Rick and RJ for me. Rick and RJ be mad. It's the brave I man. have a feeling that we're not going to see like them interact in a way like we won't hear dialogue. I think like the final scene we we'll, might see of Rick is him like walking into Alexandria or something and like either hugging Daryl or like hugging the kids or something and then it like doing some emotional music and just cutting out and that's it. Or if it cuts to the yard where he's walking with Carl in his hand and then yeah, it has yeah, or if he's like RJ yeah. in the other hand. Yeah, he's embracing his kids, and then all of a sudden, like, yeah, cuts to that thing with Carl as well. And Tell will be sat there going, "Yeah, I'll be crying. I'll have tissues ready for the final." And we've still got the the problem with um, Negan and Rick. Like, I think Rick still wants to kill Negan, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Can't remember. Yeah, because yeah, when so. when Rick's gone, uh, Negan saves Judith multiple times from Walkers, the Whisperers. I think Judith gets ill in the snow. And he saves her in the snow, and there's a snowstorm and stuff. So yeah, but yeah, that'll be a really interesting one. Um, let's see what else we got. Uh, Mark says Aegon seems to be rele- releasing his more sinister side, and Allison seems to be showing more remorse. Yeah, Otto is in the Greens trailer. Uh, Monopoly is tell for now. The lineup's really good. It's going to get bigger. Apparently, it is quite a good lineup, and I like the um, the, the variety of the announcements. Mm. That's like Sophia Dimitano first time signing. Uh, Jean Grey, something Fang Fanka Fanke. I can't, I don't know how you say her name, but yeah, Jean Grey, the mountain. Some really nice announcements so far. They announced that Robin guy today, but who was at Edinburgh when we went? We saw yeah. him quite a few, we saw him quite a few times. Uh, we've got the comment boy. Well, thanks for tuning in, mate. If you got any questions, do fire them below. Um, right then, I think it is time for a brand new feature on the channel. It is.
That's right, guys. It is YouTube <laughs> comment of the week. So every week we are going to get a YouTube comment of the week on from each of our uh, social media channels. It doesn't have to be YouTube. So um, it can either be a positive one or a negative one. So we'll start with Dino Joe. If you want to tell us a little bit about the video, what video it is, and tell us a bit about the story of what's happened and the comment. And so, yeah, take it away, mate. It's a negative comment. <laughs> it's, from our, it's from our um first watch along of our star wars watch along series so it's from the phantom menace phantom menace that we both put out on both our channels at the same time and this came about a week after the video or the live dropped um and yeah i will read it out now it's quite a funny one <laughs> i won't say who it's from because i don't want anyone else getting hate but yeah, yeah, that's optional. Um, that is optional. Uh, atrocious. Two hours of dead air with 15 minutes of actual content at the end. No personality, thought or care. The worst analysis dash watch party I've ever seen of any medium. And I replied, I bet you're fun at parties. <laughs> <laughs> Did he miss the premise? It was a watch party. You were supposed to watch the movie. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I feel I do feel looking back now, our watch parties are getting better, and I feel like we do need to talk a bit more. But it was essentially a watch party, put the film on when we watch it, and shut up, really. You know what I mean? But I think the problem we had was we were munching our snacks, and that's where you could see us munching. I didn't realize how bad it picks up on mic. Like, I was, I think you was, was you eating popcorn. I was, I eating, you was eating popcorn, of course. I was definitely eating popcorn, and all you could hear is just us munching. But, um, I, don't, I don't think you should worry about those kind of things. So personally, I have both of you on the big TV, and I watch the movie on my phone. I know yeah. that's, that sounds weird, but I feel like you guys are in the room with me watching the movie. That's the point, yeah. So when you're eating your popcorn and stuff, and I'm eating my snacks, so I'm having my Chinese, we're all just eating together. <laughs> that was quite good. Um, um, Joe, well, how do you take uh, negative YouTube comments then? Did it get to you, uh, or...? No, <laughs> I was wetting myself <laughs> laughing. I think I messaged both of you straight away, like, look at this. Yeah, very, very funny. Um, we did have a bit of back and forth. Um, and then I went into, he was live at the time as well, uh, like two minutes after. So I went into the guy's live and he thought I was coming in to like give hate back and he wanted reactions. I think that's kind of what the guy gets at. He wants reactions. And I was like, no, thank you for watching. He was like, oh, you've actually taken this really kindly. It's like, <laughs> mate, I don't care. I don't care. It's funny. Funny. Thanks for you put effort in to put a comment in, and you've made me gain views by um, pushing the video out. So nice one, fella. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you must have actually watched quite a bit then. I wonder how much you actually watched. You must have done. Cheers for the watch time, pal. Yeah, even if you skip, <laughs> even if you skip through, you must have judged. Yeah, because you couldn't just judge it after watching twenty seconds. You must have actually skipped through quite a bit. Yeah, and but now this is shit, mate. <laughs> I need to comment. <laughs> this is shit. <laughs> Uh, Milky, you want to talk us through uh, your YouTube comment of the week? Yeah, mine was from right, the video. Yeah. That... Oh, I had to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I saw That's Joe true. dancing quickly there backstage. There. <laughs> <laughs> mine was from the um, get the get to know the milkster Q and A video that I did. Yeah. I know I pushed it really hard for a week and got people to send me questions. and I wanted it to be just a laid back, me sat in, my, my, me sat in the chair just talking to people. And mm -hmm. Corey pretty much hit, hit the nail on the head and that's why I'm giving Corey the shout out for the best comment of the week. He goes, only just got round to this video. Loved it, Milky. Perfect video to watch while you eat. Keep up the work, dude. And it was a couple of, day, a couple of days after I'd uploaded the video mm -hmm. and it just sparked that youtube energy in me again to be like oh people do watch my videos and i got and i got on and i was energetic and wanted to do stuff so it just shows that how somebody can make one comment can yeah. make my day yeah yeah i so, do yeah, feel, thank you, Corey. yeah i do feel like there are a lot of people that do watch videos and i feel i even i think i could clean myself as well like i watch i watch a lot of people's videos and i don't always leave a comment but be then you really you, re, you do actually miss people putting out content sometimes and you're like oh shit like a leader pop tart for example i always watch leader pop tart and when he's not putting con not putting content out, i'm like oh, i kind of missed the habit of watching someone 
Um, yeah. So, but it is nice. It's a nice feeling, isn't it, when people do yeah, leave a nice. comment, especially like that. But um, yeah, shout out to Corey for that. For that, yeah. Corey says generally love the vid milky. Okay. But um, yeah, so yeah, how does it make you feel then uh, when you get nice comments like that, especially like I said, a couple of days after video's been out? So, judged by some subscribers, that video might be sinking down their subscription feed. So, it's nice to see someone click on that video still after a few few days. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah, say it. Go on, go on, I was just saying it's nice that you know because you don't know how how somebody finds you whether they have a That's thought of you to go look for you and they search your name into the YouTube or if they just see it on the homepage and they manage to click it. Oh, I know that guy with a ginger beard. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, and people don't know what we get up to in our daily life when we're not switched on. Mm -hmm. And like I say, it was it was definitely a comment that came a couple of weeks after. And you know, I don't talk about it much, but I do suffer with mental health. So sometimes I can sit there being on my own and just to get that ding on my phone someone left a comment and i love seeing the youtube studio thing in my notification bar because it means yeah. somebody's commented yeah when he goes red you're like oh something's yeah. happened. I, I love seeing that and that's just those little things from being a youtuber do you, so, yeah, do you, if you ever um, want to comment you should always do it do you get the gmail email as well when you get notification yeah. from youtube yeah that yeah i get that as well but it, it does annoy me a bit because you have to click the notification on youtube and then you have to go on the gmail to clear it off i think yeah do you get it when it says something if someone loves your comment do you get that no i turned that one off yeah so i get that one as well but um yeah shout shout out to Corey then and uh the other guy we won't mention for uh the comments of the week so mark says uh he loves watching the videos he's in so uh, yeah so mark was in my video two three three videos back but uh, yeah i'm sure mark well, why do i put mark in every intro Probably watch every video. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, I'll get. I'll try to get him into my intro for the videos. Yeah, <laughs> I'll try and try work something out. Anyway, it is time for YouTube comment of the week by myself. Okay, guys. So YouTube comment of the week from one of my videos. So, um. Yeah, I was struggling. I was struggling to find a comment. Uh, normally, I get comments from uh, same old people. Uh, I wanted to. I wanted to find a troll comment, but the ones I think the troll comments I've ended up deleting for rage. I was like, I need to calm myself down. Mm. I need to delete them. No, I should delete them. I should, oh, yeah. and if I get a troll comment, I'll keep it on. So, uh, but this one is from uh, the MCM Comic Con vlog when Joe and I went. And for no guess, I think we went with it for no guess. Was there any guess? There? I can't remember. I don't think there's one guess we was interested in meeting. Was there? No, Stephen Amell was her, but um, no one we yeah. were interested in meeting just fancied a con, didn't they? Yeah, so yeah, got got uh, the video got quite a, a fair amount of views. Uh, but the comment comes from the Pop Tart, and uh, it's quite a funny comment. He goes, How did you not wink at the camera when you said in brackets? Nobody likes bad head with a laughing emoji. <laughs> that, that, was, that one was like, yeah, I, yeah, that was for obvious reasons. <laughs> that was my comment of the week. Um, that was I'm in trouble. <laughs> I'm in trouble. Yeah, I'm speak. We don't get monetization. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that was what that was my comment of the week. So shout shout out to the pop type for that one. But um, yeah, I do want to encourage everyone if you want to leave a bad comment or a positive comment. Um, yeah, I'll do everyone that. be horrible. Yeah. <laughs> and don't be afraid to dislike as well because it helps. The thumbs and the thumbs down helps. It's all interaction. Yeah, no, I, yeah, that's the thing. I I like to know if people don't like the videos as well. Like, oh. makes you get better, doesn't it? Just makes yeah. you get yep. better if you take it with that spin. You like, oh, why didn't you show this? Or if or if my knowledge isn't good on something, you know. Like I remember doing the Dune two. Uh, te teaser trailer reaction. I've got no knowledge of, of during that time. Uh, I, I shouldn't have really done. I only done the trailer reaction because of Florence Pugh, but I've got no knowledge of during. I can't tell you, I didn't read the books or nothing. So I don't mind if people want to correct me and tell me I'm wrong. But um, yeah, I think really when it comes to YouTube, I prefer to do content that not I'm an expert in that, but I'm comfortable in talking about. That way, you don't, you're not going to get people saying how oh, you're an idiot. Why don't you know this? But like House of Dragon, my knowledge isn't good enough to actually do content. Maybe apart from that, like, a trade reaction, maybe. I wouldn't message you. I wouldn't comment and call you an idiot for not forgetting the name wrong or something. I'd just be like, good effort. 
Like, <laughs> I can did something, you know? Yeah. Mark says, I like to try and comment as often as I can. I usually watch people's videos at work. Yeah, that's a good point. So, so uh, how do you guys watch uh, videos mainly? Is it for your phone or how, yeah, well, or when do you watch YouTube? All day, every day. Yeah, like on on your phone mainly or computer? No, I go from my PC to my TV, mm -hmm. and I switch mostly all day. Yeah, Joe. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, me on my phone generally. I usually watch it um, on breaks at work um before before i've got other stuff on and then evenings if like just before i'll settle down for the evening i'll if i've got anything in my subscriptions i'll go through that but i tend to watch stuff if i'm at work and i'm on like a break or in between a job and i'll have a ping um for someone's video i'll try and watch it as soon as i can mm -hmm. yeah um I, I got a notification uh today uh, again about how you can do youtube live uh, with with like your, the camera this way, or, is that horizontal? Vertical, yeah, yeah, vertical. Yeah, so yeah, so I was like, that'd be a weird one to do. So that'd be, I don't know if I'll ever do it. Have you ever thought about doing that? I mean, you can even do it at the con, I suppose, couldn't you? It's pretty much going live in short form, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. that'd be a very interesting one. Um, Mark says, I'll start being more abusive on your videos. Then there you are, I'll pin that Go one right it. at the top. <laughs> <laughs> and you're Go try there. and get on the comment of the week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everyone try and get a comment of the week. So, uh, Poppin says, I want to do a watch along with the new Fallout series, even though I've never played the game. You guys ever play Fallout? Not really. Yeah, yeah. you have Milky. Yeah, pretty much. So, what's your thoughts on the, the new show? I have no idea what it's about. I don't <laughs> think it's following any of the storyline from the games. I've not got a clue. Yeah, they've got it's a standalone people. story that they've written. Oh, yeah, I think, oh, yeah. It's, I think it's just a premise of like how that world is. Yeah, it's is just it? an apocalyptic okay. world. Oh, right, that's cool. I know they've done the Borderlands as well, haven't they? They've got that Borderlands film. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not looking forward to that at all. No. Jack Black yeah. doesn't need to put himself on every funny voice character. Oh, he's, he's the robot or something. He's he? Claptrap, yeah. Worst idea ever. Yeah, um, well, I, got, I couldn't tell you if that's good or bad. I love Jack Black, though. I just, It's not good for me. I'm a massive Borderlands fan. Massive what fan? Borderlands. Oh, oh, oh! You like? I thought you were saying you like. You're a you're a Jack Black fan. <laughs> uh, I, I do like him. He's good, but I just don't think he's going to be good at Claptrap. Hmm. Yeah, I watched um, Jumanji today. I was trying to fuck myself up, I'm trying to watch a Karen Gillan film because watching like Guardians of the Galaxy, it's not really Karen Gillan's as Nebula, when she's in, like in the costume and all the makeup. So yeah, I watched Jumanji today. And Jack Black's in that, but that was that's an easy watch, Jumanji. Um, Mark says, I watch on my mobile and usually only at work, usually when I'm at home, busy with orders or interacting on Instagram. Yeah, um, yeah, I think for me, I watch I watch quite a lot of YouTube on PlayStation actually. Do you, do you, Joe? Do you watch any PlayStation? No, nah. what, what do you watch on? You only said your phone, you just, watch on, yeah, just, just on my phone generally and the TV. If it's like if it's a vlog, gen generally, I watch vlogs um, on the TV or I'll watch it a second time on the TV. So I'll yeah. watch stuff when it drops as soon as I can on my phone if I'm out. Mm -hmm. um, and then vlogs and stuff I'll rewatch basically on, on telly because it's mm -hmm. a, bigger, a bigger screen so I can capture more stuff. But like unboxings and that sort of content, I'll generally just watch it on my phone because you're only nice. seeing someone's room, you know what I mean? But I like to see like someone's perspective of walking around a con, for example, or like Milky's vlog in Glasgow and stuff like that. I'd rather watch it on the screen and like see as much as I can. Yeah, no, very well, very well said. Uh, Harry Pop says, "I'm so angry that Chris Pratt isn't in the new Fallout show. He should have played all the roles." Who's? I'm trying to think who the, who the Fallout expert is. I think it's Corey. Corey says, uh, "It's not coming up." Look forward to Ella Pennell's performance in the Fallout show. I think she's going to do great. So yeah, Ella Pennell is famous for being in Yellow Jackets, but. Yeah, really excited for this. I think she's got quite a big part in Fallout. Um, Poppin says the only video of Milky's that I'll ever ever give a thumbs up is his Razor video from years ago. It's a must see. <laughs> Love you, Rob. You want to talk about your still Razor video? Yeah. It still gets views to this day. You mentioned something when we were playing Fortnite the other night about our weekly recap review and where they send you the thingy. Yeah. And yeah, in, in those videos that people had watched that week, it was the Razor one. It's a three and a half year old video. Mm. I'm such a baby face in that video. 
my editing's terrible. I click my fingers and then the, the edit happens like a second or two after it. No, you click your fingers and then the box is in your hands or something. I think I'm something really... like yeah, well, I think I'm like, I've got a beard or part of a beard and then I go, I'm going to have a shave. One, two, three. And then a second later, the cut and the beard's gone. <laughs> <laughs> It's well, a really bad video, right? but I don't know why it gets views. Yeah, you like yeah, you don't know. It's the title, the thumbnail, just the algorithm. Yeah, the that's interest. what grew this. Where are people watching my, my videos? Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> so I yeah. think Charles watches that every day. Yeah, yeah, it's probably worth just these <laughs> on, these unrolling on the loop. Um, so guys, we're coming to the end of the show. So yeah, we'll start with you, Joe. What's coming up on the channel, and what's your plans for the weekend, content wise? Um, I've I've got quite a lengthy list of stuff I want to get done Glad this you said weekend for, for yeah. the con. Well, <laughs> you're seeing you. Um, yeah, uh, for stuff I want to get done for the con at the weekend. Um, trying to put together quite a. Um, I want to improve the vlogs every time I do one, so I'm aiming to have the best Comic Con vlog I've done. Uh, the last Scotland video did really well, so hopefully this pulls in the same sort of traction. Um, and I've got a show coming up that the oh, yeah. first show will be on April the 2nd, and then it will be Mondays for the next five weeks after that. So, yeah, really looking forward to that. I've not put anything out about it yet, but that'll be when the first one is on April the 2nd. So, yeah, pretty yeah. excited. Mm-hmm. Milky, like Monday, new day to watch the content. And Milky, your plans, uh, what you got coming up on the channel and plans for the weekend with the content wise? Uh, content wise, uh, comment. We'll have travel day vlog, like usual. I know people like to see those. Then we'll have day one and day two of the con. They will drop. Oh, you got two days, yeah. Yeah, they Are will you drop. That? You doing that as one video? Sunday. No, no, they'll be separate. They'll drop Saturday and Sunday. I'll edit them that, that night after the con, just mm. to free up space on my phone to then be able to record more the next day. Mm. And then uh, I've got Horseman Friday night. Be hanging out with those guys. <laughs> I've got um, Headless Live Sunday night to, after, after The Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. So I'll be watching The Walking Dead from the hotel. Oh, yeah, we've got The Walking Dead as well. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, and then also tomorrow you're going to see my third video in a row. Three, three in a week. I've done three in each week, which is good for me. Up on the back, Milky. Um, <laughs> it's reacting to the House of the Dragon trailers. I'm watching them literally after this live stream. That's coming out tomorrow, is it? Yeah, that'll come out tomorrow. Oh, as well so as my uh, Aberdeen showcase video. And you're doing a live stream tonight. And I'm doing a live stream. <laughs> and you're going to see Ghostbusters. You can do a Ghostbusters review Ghostbusters, on that. Yeah. Do a Ghostbusters Frozen Empire short as well. Just bang <laughs> it all out. So, I wonder what happens if you've done like, four or five videos in a day. No idea. Uh, yeah. Oh, Mark says, are we going to get the hotel room review from Aberdeen? Now, this is quite an interesting topic. Uh, we're just about to go on the hour, Mark, because uh, me and Joe are sharing the room and Milky's got his own room. So there could be a couple of room reviews. Milky, are you doing a room yep. review? I've packed my purple torch, the black light thing. Excuse me. Oh, my God. <laughs> you brave man. Yep, I'm going proper, yeah, proper hotel review. Mm-hmm. We're going and to strip you're... the bed. We're going to look for bed bugs. We're going to do everything. And you're a before, before and after? No, not after. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know if I take on a gothic chick. <laughs> <laughs> do it after. I'm blind. I'm blind. <laughs> but yeah, Tell me good. why. Um, and your, your request to the hotel staff? I, I, you'll see in the vlog. I'm not going to spoil that. Okay, all right, we'll save that one then. I have got the box of chocolates though, just to sweeten the deal. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah, as for myself, um, yeah, there'll be a Comic Con vlog coming out the weekend. Hope I'm hoping Sunday night, but if not, it'll definitely be out on the Monday. And then we've got a Walking Dead reaction video to <laughs> episode five. I can't put that one up, Mark. I'm sorry, <laughs> I can't put that one up. <laughs> Um, yeah, my next week's comment of the week. Yeah, 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 you have to comment on comment on this video, and that could be comment of the week. Um, yeah, well, there'll be a vlog for this weekend, and there'll be a reaction video to episode five of The Walking Dead. But um, should be loads yeah. more fun stuff coming out. Really excited for the weekend, guys. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you 
in Aberdeen. Maybe do a little live in Aberdeen. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next week. See you later. Thank <laughs> you.